my main point I wanted to make kind of getting into to Dabo Sweeney is, number one, I've got a ton of respect for Dabo, mm-hmm. what he's done at Clemson. When me growing up, Clemson, and you know the old term as well, it's Auburn with a lake. I mean, they had really hadn't done anything special. You know, it wasn't alive during the Danny Ford days or anything like that. But he, and he elevated them. Remember, you know, that they, they went out on a limb hiring him as the head coach, never being a head coach before, you know, being an assistant that worked his way up. And it was rocky the first couple of years. They were about to fire him if he didn't have a big year. Then all of a sudden, you have that big year. You turn it into this dynastical run. You elevate Clemson to the highest level that they've ever been at. And at this whole time, the whole time you were building it, you kept saying, be the best, right? You had signs in the facility, be the best. You kept hearing Dabo talk about the standard of excellence. We need to have a standard of excellence. If we're going to raise our profile, we have to raise our mindset. We have to raise our expectations. We can win championships at Clemson. Hey, Clemson fans, you ought to walk around and strut a little bit because we can build a monster here. Look what I'm doing right now. When he was on top, it was all about the standard of excellence. We're going to go out there and kick everybody's ass because we're not afraid of anybody here at Clemson. That's what I'm going to turn us into. And he did it. And he does deserve credit for that. But if you're going to talk like that while you're building it and while it's thriving and while everybody's patting you on the back and saying your way is the best way, when life evolves and the game evolves like it naturally does and you don't and then it starts kind of falling off a little bit, which I think we can all agree four and four at Clemson is falling off compared to where they've been. You can't then on the back end say, oh, well, you know what? We're not perfect this year or we're not excellent this year, but you should give me a pass. You shouldn't worry. You shouldn't be upset, even though I've told you that the standard of excellence should be maintained around here because I built it up and this is who we are now. You can't have your cake and eat it too. If you're going to talk that way when it's going great, you've got to hold that standard when it's when it's going bad. And I'm not saying Dabo should be fired or that the Clemson fans that think that Clemson will never win another game aren't overreacting. They are. You do have to live in reality. But don't sit here and tell me that the standard is raised. We expect excellence every year. Look at these facilities. Look at who we are. Clemson is on the same level as Alabama and Georgia and all these other places. And then when you're four and four, sit here and tell the fan base, hey, y'all shut up and be thankful for, for the memories that I've created. Mm-hmm. I don't think those two, I, I can't square those two things. You already David. did the hard part. You, forget hard part. You already did the impossible. You made Clemson football a dynasty. I mean, when I was growing up, I didn't think that much of Clemson football. And I'm not talking about you just won the ACC and made the college football playoff no. in a couple of years. You've gone toe-to-toe with Nick Saban and with Urban Meyer and these guys. You have two national championships. That's the hard part. To me, the easier part is just being restrained when someone from Spartanburg calls in and yells at you or you know, fans, the Clemson fan, what he is calling a, what do you say, a, a vocal minority, which I agree with, um, you know, are... are unappreciative of what you've built there. And I don't disagree with what he's saying. That's the hard part. I agree with 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 his frustration. I just think the easy part is to rise above that when you're the head coach of Clemson. Yeah, and and Blaine, you know, uh, again, th- th- I'm not saying that people should not be thankful. You know, Dabba's sitting here talking about, you know, look at what we've done, look what we built. There's a time for that. You know what it's called? Retirement. Mm-hmm. In this day and age, where every day matters, when guys like Nick Saban and Kirby Smart and all these guys are able to be malleable when they're at the top. That's something we haven't seen from Dabo yet. We've seen Nick Saban be malleable at the top, hated the hurry up, no huddle, hated the up-tempo offense, complained about it for two years, three years in a row. When he realized it wasn't going to change, what did he do? He didn't go bury himself in the sand and say, I'm done with this, this sucks, I don't like the way the game's going. He evolved, went and got some of the best guys to be able to run it, and went and put an incredible offense together and won championships. You know what they asked? They asked Nick Saban after he won his national title, hey, Nick, what's the first thing you're going to do? You know what he said? I'm going recruiting. Mm -hmm. You're going to have time, Dabo, to look back on what you built at Clemson. That's when you're done. But you let the fans sip from the cup, right? We talk about it all the time. You let those fans taste filet mignon. They're not going back to baloney. They don't want baloney. You told them you're going to do nothing but give them filet mignon. So don't be don't be shocked or don't be just Hoo! when you don't give them filet mignon and they're pissed off about eating spam and egg. Well, yeah, they can understand being pissed off, but Clemson fans, I go and tell you this right now: the grass sitting greener on the other side all the time. 
You better remember what this man did for you and who you were before this man come. Trust me, as an Auburn fan, I was waiting to play you on the Chick-fil-A Bowl at the end of every damn year. All right, and that's nothing special. Yeah, but you opinion. do that at the end. Yeah, I know. But if, if my thing is this. I don't think Dabo is adapting to the times, right? Some, some species die out because they don't know how to adapt, right? Mm-hmm. What do the great ones do? They adapt. Saban, Kirby. And everyone wants to sit here and talk about that offensive scheme. Look. The reason Dabo won all these national championships is because they didn't have some phenomenal offensive scheme. Players win you games, all right? That's what you can come out here in the I formation and roll through teams if you got the right guys. Trust me, go back to Bama as I watched your third string running back scores Vandy, who was Brian Robinson Jr. All right, <laughs> if you have those problems, it's great. But to me, Dabo won. Not everybody's opinions matter, all right? They don't. They're fans. It's short for fanatical, okay? Sometimes you just got to take one on the chin and know who you are. Two, doesn't he just seem like a Karen a little bit? Right? Like, oh, God, those kids are too loud outside. Oh, why are these certain commercials on TV? It's like he's like trying not to werewolf every second, but he's slowly <laughs> just getting pissed off about every little thing. Man, you're having a bad season. It happens, bro. It happens. Trust me. You'll get past it. You'll be better. The real thing is, is uh, well, let's talk about that transfer portal. All right? going to have to be a little bit different to look on that. Let's talk about NIL. Got to start spending a little bit more money because the schools around you are throwing bread at kids and you're not throwing them out the same amount and those kids uh, are going to different schools. So there's a lot of things you need to change before you worry about some probably 5'8", 300-pound kid sitting on his couch eating Cheetos in his shorts and care about his opinion. <laughs> yeah, uh, look, I, again, it's, it's very hard to win here, but, but the minute you start embracing and saying, oh, woe is me, oh, it's okay that, that we're not doing as great as what we normally do. You are falling further behind Ohio State, Michigan, Bama, Georgia. I can go down the list. Oregon, because these other guys, it never stops. That's what makes it tough. When it comes to coffee, it's Black Rifle. Mm. All right, We all know that. That's not even an argument. All right, If you haven't tried it, guess what? We've got a great deal for you. Even if you don't always have time to brew coffee the traditional way, Black Rifle Coffee has ready to drink cans. They're perfect for people who are running an up-tempo offense in their life. It's a, it's a veteran-founded coffee company operated by principal men and women who honor those who protect, defend, and support our country. And with every purchase you make, they give back. So save money and drink America's coffee. Go to blackriflecoffee.com. Use our promo code booster. That's B-O-O-S-T-E-R at checkout. It's blackriflecoffee.com. Use that promo code booster at checkout, and you get 10% of your one-time purchase or first coffee club order. That's BlackRifleCoffee.com, promo code booster. You get that 10% off, and you can also find Black Rifle Coffee in grocery and convenience stores near you, but we all know you want to go to BlackRifleCoffee.com, use that promo code booster because it helps everybody out. It's the hardest part is not arriving. It's thriving once you're there and surviving once you're there. That's the hardest part. Climbing up the mountain Everybody is hungry. But when you get to the top of the mountain and you start looking down, can you maintain that hunger? That's that's what's been so impressive about Nick Saban. Mm-hmm. Right? We see guys that get to the top, win one, win two, that's it, right? Don't do anything else past that. But but Nick Saban has been able to continue to win and continue to win. And Davos won a lot. And I don't think he's done winning. But at some point. You can't sit here and go revisit it and say, oh, well, guys, all that stuff I said earlier, the standard of excellence, that only mattered when we were building it up. That only mattered when I had Deshaun Watson. That only mattered when I had Trevor Lawrence. That only mattered when I had T. Higgins and ETN and all these guys. No, no, no. Again, you gave them the filet mignon. You gave it to them. You can't turn around and take it away and say, all right, here you go, boys. Here's some old meat. Here's some scraps. Oh, Y'all better uh, be happy with it because it's the isn't truth. Sometimes starvation good, though, if you're a leader. No. Sometimes it Not is. if you want to stay in it power. Cripples, it fast. cripples the fast. willing. Right? It, yeah. cri- it makes them more supportive. We watched it yesterday. You're a monster. We watched it yesterday. It's you're, a real you're, thing. You're a monster. Stalin Thanks did been watching it. How to Be a Tyrant on Netflix. Kim Jong-un right. did it. Speaking about tyrants, let's get to the Booster Club. All right, let's go to Totally Bogus. Hashtag Ask Cranico. What's up, brother? Does Dabo State Clemson for his tenure as a coach? Or does he end up at Bama with Saban like all the other coordinators? No, look, Dabo's going to end at Clemson. Whether that's him being done with coaching or him, you know, getting it back going where where it was, Dabo Sweeney's not going to be assistant anywhere else. He's going to go be the head coach at Alabama. There's certain markers. I don't think he's replacing. He's going home. Mama's going to call. He won a championship there as a player. Did they ever get that grill? Clemson escaped the zoo. 
the, Punch you in the, eye. the search most definitely continues. Yes. <laughs> That's where he played ball. He's going home, boys. Just wait till Nick Saban returns. All right, let's go to Sasha. Is Dabo just saying this so that people don't criticize the players and that they decide to transfer from it? No, look, they're going to criticize the players either way. I mean, look what happened to Cade Klubnik after he decided to keep that ball there in the goal line uh, uh, last weekend. Look, it's. I think Dabo is doing this because he generally, I think he's saying how he feels. I don't think Dabo, this is some like facade or some like made up strategy to try and take heat off the players. I think Dabo feels like he's like, all right, well, I built this up. I gave you all this. I gave you all a championship, all this stuff. We have bragging rights in the state of South Carolina when it comes to championships. Y'all should be grateful. I think he really was personally hurt because I think, I think Dabo thrives off the Tylers from Spartanburg. I think he thinks of himself as like, I gave that guy, he's walking into work like Clemson. I mean, ugh. Winning championships, ugh. Turn on the NFL, we're just running around making plays. Like, I gave him bragging rights, therefore he should be thankful mm. to me. That's what I, I really think. Hey, YouTube, thanks for checking us out. Uh, it's my birthday. Best birthday present would be for you to subscribe if you already haven't. Hit that like button, turn that notification bell on so you know when we're dropping content because we go like every single day. We're never going to let you down. We're doing our part.